Great. So I guess we'll get started. Um, the focus of this panel, uh, in case you were not aware, is on Franklin Dow, which is, I guess, as a quick introduction, a um, off-campus organization that the really dedicated members of Penn Blockchain participate in. Um, and so we focus on, um, we have a bunch of different committees and all the committee heads are up here. Um, and you know, we do a lot of industry work and I guess I'll just let each committee kind of um, introduce themselves because that's what it is. It's just a bunch of committees kind of running independently. So starting from Vince maybe. Sure, hi everyone. My name is Vince and I'm the deputy director of the development committee. So in our committee, we focus on building our own blockchain projects, teaching coders the blockchain Web3 stack, and also partnering with organizations and doing contract work for them. Hi, I'm Cindy. I co-lead um, research with Eric, and we, um, we do a bunch of things. So one thing we do is that we partner with protocols to you know, do research for them. So this can range from, you know, um, analyzing the market trends from like comparing some and contrast like different versions of a protocol to like you know predicting about what would be like the future like for some things like regulations um, and outside beyond like partnership we also do our in-house research on like topics that the team is interested in. What are what are some of our clients? Oh, our clients very exciting. Um, this semester we have Aave, Filecoin, Layer Zero, and some other um, really interesting protocols in the pipeline. All right, go ahead, Carl. Hey everyone, my name is Kirill. I lead uh, the investments team at Franklin Dow. Um, the two things we do is sourcing for venture funds that kind of sign up for the service. Uh, it's a uh, bi-semester subscription. And uh, due diligence, which comes in groups of four students working as part-time interns at these venture funds. And they're usually delegated uh, a lot of like manu more manual tasks, like um, a research about a portfolio company that a fund wants to put out, or uh, a due diligence report on a potential investment. Want to shout out some of your clients? Yeah, of course. Uh, so last semester we worked with Big Brain Holdings, who are present at this conference, uh, Evernew uh, Capital, Cogitent Ventures, Sky9 Capital, um, and there's one more, um, Long Hash Capital. There we go. Go ahead, June. Hey everyone, my name's June. Uh, I help out our governance team here at Penn. Um, our governance team is major delegates across many different ETH layer one DeFi protocols as well as some other L1, L2 chains that we've sort of you know, ventured into recently. Uh, we take on, I guess, initiatives that revolve around anything doing with governance um, that can range from uh, fleshing out grant DAO programs to actually you know, getting involved through grants or research as well. I think most of the people who have heard about Penn Blockchain or Franklin Dow have mostly heard about it through governance. Um, and you want to talk about <laughs> what, what you guys are... Governance kind of, is cool. Yeah, what, what you guys are kind of delegates on, et cetera. Sure. So we're delegates for Uniswap, Compound, Aave, MakerDAO, Optimism, DYDX, Index Coop, My Protocol, uh, Centrifuge, Canto, and a couple others. Um, our main goals are to not just purely vote yes or no, but they actually get involved with the protocols themselves. Uh, delegate outreach, you know, protocol involvement, getting involved in the forums, uh, you know, taking on work, whether that's through grants, whether that's through, you know, BD roles at the protocols themselves. Like personally, for example, um, I was involved as a contributor to MakerDAO and had a really big passion with it. Um, that was a great way for us to segue into sort of the governance realm for Maker. Uh, a lot of our projects, you know, have people who are individually involved or somewhat, you know, tangentially related and therefore they had take on that passion of being a delegate for that protocol themselves. And I will say I worked at a fund this summer and they knew who we were just from the delegate board. So. Nice. Anyways, I, I think like this level of involvement in industry is pretty uncommon. Even in the consulting clubs, maybe they have three or four clients, definitely not on like this level. I guess do you guys want to kind of go down and talk about, you know, why you see your committee having like such an edge compared to other college clubs in terms of like being able to do so much like real world industry work um, and, and I guess get compensated in some way for it? Yeah, I think so. Starting off. Um, I think that because of the fact that we're Penn Blockchain, sort of, you know, a spin off of that per se, or we're, you know, a lot of the members share some overlap with Franklin Dow, um, I think the fact that we are all uh, in a very broad, broad topic, so just crypto as a whole, 
um, let's, is effectively the same as like the business club, right? So there's so many different aspects of you know, crypto that you can go into. Each of our committees sort of run as a, a sub-DAO. And each of our sort of committees have their own sort of you know, um, incentives and their own sort of, I guess, eagerness to take on work that are in relationship to a category. Um, for us, that's governance, very broad in, in a sense, and I think it's ever expanding by the day. Um, it's a great way to sort of put your face out there. Uh, a lot of major protocols and a lot of major projects sort of either tangentially or directly are related to a you know, major DeFi protocol in some way. And there's a good chance you've, you know, we've been lobbied by them, we've had a talk with them. Um, you know, it, it comes down to just sort of uh, brand awareness. I think uh, investments has a very unique value proposition compared to the traditional finance clubs. Um, otherwise offered at the University of Pennsylvania. And like for those that don't know, it's like a very heavily financed skewed school. Um, the unique aspect of the investments team of Penn Blockchain is that uh, participants in the industry can't really discount students that uh, are in the club, right? Because all of us um, can meet a talented 17 year old who's been coding for the last three years and knows a lot more about a specific topic uh, than us and they can teach us a lot. So uh, it's kind of the same. And that's why they get real work from uh, people that work in the industry and they get compensated for it. And effectively that allows us to create a community of, uh, a very tight knit community of people that are all looking to go into crypto venture out of college. And they get to like, build this community through the experiences uh, that we can now afford given the fact that the committee makes uh, a decent amount of money. Uh, on the work side, however, they get to get hands-on experience in the industry working with these venture funds. So on the sourcing side, they get to do exactly what people in venture funds do, going out to hackathons, scouring Twitter, uh, finding other ways to source early stage projects and uh, fighting for allocations in those on behalf of our clients and then connecting clients with those projects if they're interested. And then on the due diligence side, when they're working with venture funds, they get to interact with uh, the very top managers of these funds that give them face time both with themselves and with the portfolio companies. And I think that's a very unique uh, value proposition that we're giving to uh, students at Penn that are interested in crypto investing long term. Yeah, um, adding on to what June and Kuro said, you know, um, at research, I think there are three things we're trying to focus on. The first thing is really writing like their opinion pieces um, about what's going on in the industry. So, I mean, we have, it's so easy to get, you know, I get access to information in crypto, right? You're on Twitter, there's like a lot of things on news, but then how do we reason about all these things we see and how do you synthesize across like different platform, different, what a different stakeholders are saying. So that's like, you know, one thing we really do at research is like really sit down and like um, collect all this information and think about what is the right way to think about this, what is the right framework to apply to. So that's like the first thing we focus on. The second thing is like we want to be very quantitative and like data driven, right? So this would be including like um, having do inquiries in the research for, to like using like APIs on DeFi Lima, um, coin market cap to just like use like historical data. This can be like using historical data to predict what's the future trend or like seeing like how are like some protocols doing in terms of like querying. Um, writing SQL queries on Dune. And the last thing is that we have a very diverse team. So we have, you know, um, PhD candidates who are like researching into like Uniswap. And we also have, he's actually sitting in the audience right now. Um, we also have, you know, folks interested in AI. Um, we have folks like, you know, building their own startup. We also have like folks interested in like the data science aspect of crypto. So I think this really diverse team um, builds a very nice community for people to just like learn from each other and see like, because we all know that crypto is so diverse that there's like some there's something in it for everyone, and um, just ha by having this community of like really talented members, I think it's it's awesome that everyone can learn from each other and do like um, research on the topics that they're interested in. I just want to plug in quickly on that. Like I think a lot of funds and firms like are trying to learn about everything in crypto, but it's like nearly impossible because of how many things there are. And so like having this group of like people who like Cindy said are just interested and in deep into like all sorts of random things really gives us a value proposition or like an advantage in the fact that like, you know, there's eighteen members and each person is specialized in something different, which I think is really cool. Sorry, go ahead, Vince. Yeah. 
I think on the development side, one of the things that sets a pen blockchain aside from other university clubs is that you're actually able to go and contribute to real, real world projects. Like crypto by itself, or the ethos of crypto is very decentralized, breaking away from that like control structure. Like in many other companies, even software ones, you have to start at the bottom and go all the way up. Like you have to have a degree or something to be able to contribute. But I think a lot of crypto protocols are very open and welcoming to contributions from anyone. Like it doesn't really matter where you're from or what your experience is, as long as you can write good code, they'll accept anyone's contributions. And so I think that's what's really enabled us to like contribute and give our members active experience working with different firms in the industry and building on real world projects. And so I think it's an incentive for both the companies, like they get a free talent pool of university students. And it's also an incentive for the students themselves because they get to work with actual companies and build things that they can use later or get, gain experience from. I think this really just goes back to uh, participants in the industry being unable to discount uh, students at university like you would in any other industry. Like if we look at finance, like uh, vice president is never really going to delegate work to um, a student that's like a second year in college because they don't know anything about finance yet. Whereas in crypto, you can have a student who like is a freshman at a university and walks in like having worked at Consensus and in Fura. <laughs> that's Vince, by the way. <laughs> uh, we're going to do questions at the end. I. I I was told I was moderating this panel two hours ago, so don't worry, I'm not gonna blabber on for too long. But I do wanna say really quickly, like I do think Penn Blockchain has like this really big advantage in like being able to attract a like really talented individual who's inherently curious and, and I think less risk averse as well. And I guess like I kinda wanna talk about like our public perception here at Penn. I think, you know, like the crypto community in general at a lot of colleges is you know, I have some Yale friends here and they think they're not nearly as popular, or, I guess, I don't want to say the word cool, but like <laughs> cool on campus as, as maybe Penn Blockchain is. I guess like let's talk about really quickly how we've built like an image um, that students might want to join or in, are interested in. Um, and I think every committee takes a different approach to this. So I guess you guys just go ahead. Um, who wants to start? Just go ahead and talk. Go yeah, ahead. so I, I think this is sort of setting me up here, but... Um, our club last year got some decent amount of funding just doing the work that we usually do. Um, and, you know, we decided at the end of the day, right, we, everyone puts in a decent amount of work, but we don't really, you know, W2 people, we don't 1099 people, we don't have the sort of legal facilities, right, to just pay people. So how do we sort of incentivize people in a different way, right? How do we sort of essentially pay them without actually paying them? So we went on quite a few trips last year. Um, for example, I think the, the highlight of, honestly, like my winter break was maybe 15 of us went on a ski trip together in the Poconos. We, you know, spent a, a weekend up there, um, did some nice bonding activities. Um, and then, you know, our committee last semester, the people who did, you know, the most work, the people who sort of contributed a lot, right, um, it, it's sort of like a, a pen, maybe a pen thing more so than other schools, but, you know, you walk around on campus and everyone has Canada Goose jackets, right? So we got our committee uh, Canada Goose jackets that were pen blockchain branded. Um, the jackets, you know, are definitely not cheap. They're definitely uh, a sign of maybe almost like social status here. Um, very quickly, it became sort of like a, a pretty significant like chatter and sort of just the entire pen ecosystem, right? Um, I think, one, it was a great way of rewarding our members who did a lot of work. And two, it, I think it quickly became one of the best like marketing decisions a club has ever done. Um, very quickly, everyone sort of knew about these jackets, the a number of applicants and the number of interests, right, for one way or another, sort of, you know, doubled or tripled in, 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 a, in a few quick weeks. So, you know, I think it comes to a point where, you know, at the end of the day, you don't, wanna, you don't want them to join, you don't want them to stay in the club for, for a goose jacket or for sort of, you know, a free trip. But I think it's a great way of sort of showing that, hey, this is a lucrative market. I think this is a market where you can have a lot to learn about. This is a market where there's a lot of people who, you know, are, are doing real work, right? It's not just a pump and dump. And I think to the general, you know, pen environment, the general pen community, um, seeing this was sort of like a, a realization that, you know, there's not, there's other alternatives as to just maybe purely IB or private equity, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, a lot of the people in the club might, you know, eventually choose IB or private equity, but I think it's just a great way for them to sort of at least get that initial crypto interest, that initial crypto experience, and for them to, you know, at least see what we're doing and decide for themselves if this is, you know, the real deal and if they want to keep doing it or not. So, it's a good segue into a new moral question that we're faced with because, uh, naturally, following these this good marketing decision, 
uh, we're getting a lot of interest from freshmen. And at the end of the day, uh, they're coming to us and they're like, should we join this team? Should we like dedicate time to this? And the moral question we're facing now is like, especially like pre-professional students, they have like a relatively laid out career in front of them in investment banking, consulting in private equity. And uh, we are to like, the, the moral question is what do we reply to this question? Should they join the uh, inherently risky industry where nothing is guaranteed, nothing is promised, and uh, the salaries are a little less, um, versus continuing on their path? And naturally, they will have more fun in college uh, if they join Penn Blockchain versus other clubs um, where the whole budget is less than a kind of a goose jacket. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but, this is something we've been thinking about, and uh, it's very hard now to convince them to not apply and to actually like make a conscious decision about whether they're uh, going to put their eggs into the crypto basket and take on the risks of the industry. Maybe a little break from all this monetary talk. Cindy, you wanna <laughs> talk about how we recruit without using this much money? <laughs> Oh, I was, I mean, I was thinking Jin talked about marketing, Kuro talked about, you know, career path. I was going to touch on the community. I think, um, and also I can talk about recruiting as well. I think what's really interesting about, you know, the pen blockchain is that um, people, of course, they have interest in crypto, but a lot of people also just do really cool things outside of crypto. So it's not that we only talk about blockchain every day. Like we have like people who have been to the military and we have people who, you know, play violin, people building startups. And um, I think, you know, blockchain, the club, brought us together and we genuinely became really good friends from like doing like productive work, either being research, governance, you know, um, investments or like development. Like from the trips that Drew mentioned, right, like we became like really good friends with each other and then we, I know for sure that these are the, some of the people who we will be in touch even after Penn. So I think Penn blockchain create this unique catalyst to like bring like really cool people together who will be like, you know, long-term friendship, for friends. So I think that's a really cool, Thing about the club, and I think in terms of recruitment, um, <laughs> I mean, I just yeah. In terms of recruitment, um, I think we do have a big presence on campus, as Jun touch on, you know, just like Canada goose jackets and stuff like that. Um, so I think people do know about a club, and um, how we do it right now is that each committee has its own like take home task sort of, and then once we filter out people with the take home task, we'll conduct interviews with them to see if it's like a good culture fit. Yeah, I think Cindy and I could rave on about every single member on our team and how cool they are. But anyway, sorry, go ahead, Vince. Yeah, I mean, I think to add on to what all the other directors have said, I think one of the things that separates Penn Blockchain from other clubs is the experiences it gives to the members. So for context, I was a freshman like six months ago, just came into Penn. And then a month later, I was flying out of Penn going <laughs> to a hackathon. And so I think it's like, not just like the fact that you can bond with friends, although that's like very much important too, but it's also the wealth of experiences you can access through our cl club really draws members in. Like the opportunity to go to ETH Bogota or ETH SF or another like blockchain conference around the world and to meet new people there, to like visit the city, see the culture and also hack on some really cool projects I think is a really um, attractive factor for a lot of the students that join our club. And so... I think that's something that really differentiates ourselves from other clubs. Like we're not just a club at Penn, but we're a club that will allow you to like experience the rest of the world too. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, let's let's open it up for questions. If no one has questions, I can continue my, my little improv spree, but um, I think you had a question. I think you can bring this mic back to her. Sure. So um, I guess we can talk about governance from a realm of internal governance and external governance, right? So external governance can be sort of the different DeFi protocols we're delegates for, 
um, the different areas and different ecosystems that we're involved in that aren't are internal, right? So for those, we yes, we 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 currently have you know delegations around eighty million dollars or so worth of tokens across thirteen to fourteen different protocols. We are trying to be you know more active in just not only I guess the ETH layer one network, right, but other different alternative L1s, L2 networks as well. We're, you know, currently delegates for Optimism, we're delegates for StarkNet. Uh, a lot of chains, I think, as our general DAO-wide sort of, you know, thesis is like, we, we want to be chain agnostic to a degree, right? There's some chains, you know, that we, we want to skew away from per se, right? But generally speaking, there's a lot of innovation, there's a lot of tech, and a lot of our members are really interested in a wide variety of them. So from the external governance standpoint, we're always looking to do more, we're always looking to take on more protocols, and we're always looking to take on more stake, right? You know, with more delegation takes on more responsibility, but you know, as I think sort of we mentioned, like with the increase in interest, there's also increase in bandwidth, there's more, you know, projects, there's more people willing to do work. Now internal governance wide, we have, I guess, internal metrics and internal sort of DAO-wide parameters, right? So we have a governance, we, we have a treasury. Um, this treasury is allocated budgets for both um, I guess, you know, we, we spent probably like way too much time debating down, down the techniques, right? We actually have an updated bylaws if, if you know, if you want to see, I think they're going to be on our website soon as well. But these sort of bylaws and budgetary sort of, you know, outlines, uh, different committee inflows. So like if I bring in 10,000, how much of that goes to my committee? How much of that goes to the general treasury fund? The general treasury fund could be used for, you know, sending our members to East Denver, sending our people in different, maybe like a social event as a whole, right? And as for the actual, like maybe, how are we truly a DAO, or if are we actually a DAO, right? I think the term DAO can be, you know, applied across a wide scenario of options. We do internal governance voting in a sense of everyone gets one vote, uh, and instead of using a token, which I think introduces a lot of issues and a lot of problems in itself, we do whitelisted voting. So everyone has an address that they get whitelisted for, and that address itself sort of constitutes their personal identity, and they can vote with that. Um, we found this, instead of issuing, like, you know, Franklin DAO tokens to people and voting with that, we found this to be a a legally easier way to do things. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Wait, okay, sorry, I lost you after the external governance part at the beginning. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so, so question related to the external governance and, and the delegation. I think it's a super cool system. Uh, if I understood right, then uh, you basically get some votes to vote on the other projects that basically trusted you. So they cannot give you like external uh, power to have say in what they're doing. Right. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Great. So uh, how much like uh, latitude do you have there like to make your own decision like? Yeah, so I think this actually is a question that actually came up, um, you know, a lot so recently, especially with like the most recent Uniswap vote, if that's what you're referencing. Um, for some background, right, a lot of our delegation is from uh, VCs, right? And these VCs will usually keep a X amount of percent of their own tokens and then delegate out X percent. So I think this probably most recently, you know, applies to Andreessen. Andreessen is a large investor in Uniswap, but I think they internally have around 40, 45 plus million uni tokens. Now they only kept around 15 for themselves to vote on. And the other, I would say maybe 30 or so million are delegated across the different university groups, different professional delegates, us being one of them, right? Now the question lies like, how much of a proxy are we for Uniswap? Right? I think that's what you're asking, right? Are we sort of influenced by them? Are yep. we sort of just, you know, they're, they're pawns, right, in, in a game that they're playing? Um, I, I want to say that some v different VCs take different approaches. Um, some VCs sort of, you know, want us to be there, sort of, you know, just eyes on the ground, like want to vote entirely on how they are. I think Andreessen in this particular question is very much the opposite. They delegated tokens to us, and for the longest time, I had no idea who to contact in Andreessen and even talk about. Right? Like I think when I first started doing governance, maybe like seven or eight months ago over the summer, like start of the summer, right? I was like, shit, like who do I talk to, right? And so over the, over the course of the next like, few months, you know, I, I, I've built up a few relations and I, I think, you know, I built up friendly relations with the people because, you know, in Jason, it's just cool, like I want to meet the guys. But from a governance perspective, like with this most recent layer zero, wormhole, um, BNB, deploy Uniswap on BNB vote, right? We literally did not talk to them at all. We got lobbied very, very heavily maybe, you know, 25, 30 different parties within like a two-day period. Andreessen was not one of them. 
Um, I'm sure there was back channeling, and I'm sure like different VCs wanted their own stake. But I think Andreessen respected this sort of, you know, I, I really respected the fact that they sort of kept this divide there, and that they didn't even reach out to us regarding a lobbying position or anything. At the end of the day, you know, obviously the votes are sort of, you know, came out, and it ended up being that most of the people that Andreessen delegated to voted yes on some proposal, and they voted no. Right, and Andreessen pretty much saw their bags being voted against them in a, such a way that their ultimate goal did not c come to fruition. And so I think at the end of the day, it comes to a problem of, or not a problem, but it comes to a question of like, you know, is this good for the ecosystem, is this not, right? And I think from a decentralization standpoint, this, you know, this is, this is a win. Um, Andreessen can easily just have undelegated and voted through everything and pretty much just like single-handedly bull, bull run it through. And I, I really respect the fact that they kept that distance there and they didn't really, you know, they literally, could have, could have won, but they didn't. Um, they, they respected the sort of decentralization of it. Thank you. Yeah. A great panel, really enjoyed learning more, uh, especially about the comments of the meritocracy. Um, the, the fact that in this crypto space, you know, you really don't have to come from a certain school or a certain background, but you're really judged on what you can put, the value you, you offer. Um, Curious about just the general si the actual membership size of the group and how the relationship between the DAO and the club exists and also um, how you see it evolving. So well, is it, if it is a student-only um, community, how is responsibilities passed down? How do alumni continue to be involved? Um, yeah, just curious about how you see the, the boundaries yeah. of the community. So. Uh, just for background, the club limits involvement uh, to students that are currently enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, the on-campus club um, is um, established for an education, pro like uh, for the education program that we run every semester and for the conference. Um, those are the main kind of two things it does, and that has about 300, uh, 400 members. Um, some more involved, some less. Uh, more on the left side. And then the DAO uh, recruits members that don't necessarily have to be in Penn Blockchain, the club, but uh, most of them were. Um, and that's uh, members that are much more involved, that are looking to pursue a career in the Web3 web space, and that have found a specific sector of interest along the different committees that we have um, that they're looking to pursue. So that's uh, about 70, 80, uh, like actively involved students. And like, if I speak for time commitment here, it's about five to 10 hours a week that they're putting in. Awesome. Any more questions? Okay. Um, so, I'm curious if you guys have, you obviously have a lot of power and a lot of exposure, which is awesome. And I'm curious, is there a particular thesis that you guys have about the role you want Franklin Dow to play in terms of the larger crypto ecosystem or particular topics or areas of, of interest that you are really trying to contribute to and push forward? I think uh, there's multiple ways of answering this question, but the core thesis is to allow students to participate in the industry and pursue um, what they are looking to kind of dive into. Uh, but that being said, we try to skew towards the more academic side of crypto and we try to be on the cutting edge of technology with the involvements that we do. So we're not as actively pursuing partnerships, for example, with layer one networks that were popular in 2017, but we are actively trying to make connections with the technologies that are being used uh, on the cutting edge, like the zero knowledge ones. Yeah, like it's a high level, right? This speaks, this is for both like Franklin Dow and Penn Blockchain. We are a incubation for eventual careers, right? Um, the goal, ultimate goal is to give you enough information and give you enough knowledge that if you were to pursue a Web3 related job, you would have the necessary and sort of, you know, 
resume that would lead you to a nice lofty job at the end of the day, right? Something that you can maybe find enjoyment on, you can hopefully get paid decently in one night where you can make influence in the actual ecosystem. Now different committees have their own, like I'd say, you know, committee visions as well. For example, the governance committee, right? We really want to be a professional delegate, right? I think university delegates have in the past been historically not great. They've been low on lackluster on participation, participation, and they haven't really sort of shown themselves to be sort of any true value add in my opinion, right? This was maybe a year or so ago. And since then, I think there's been schools that have sort of upped their game that have been sort of, you know, pretty apparent and in, in, um, shown their abilities to actually contribute to the ecosystem. And then the actual role of the professional delegate has come out as well in the last year. You have these, you know, true for-profit companies that, you know, are raising money. They're sort of, you know, becoming full on like business models for people. And I think for us, that is an area, at least for me personally, that I really will, really am trying to explore and really am trying to sort of, you know, get our name out there more and more to be like, hey, like, you know, we're not just here because we're like a university, we're here because we are actually good delegates. I think another aspect that we didn't really mention uh, before on this panel is how focused PEM blockchain is on uh, allowing students to build connections in the industry as they're going through their university career. Because... Uh, two or three years ago, um, a student would graduate and having not had the opportunity to go to these conferences, like compensated by any entity in the space, uh, they graduate and they don't know anyone. And they, uh, like, especially speaking from an investment standpoint, oftentimes they don't know how to do the basic skill of sourcing, for example. Um, the goal of Penn Blockchain is to allow them to build both connections at Penn. So we're trying to have them like build very tight, the like close, uh, tight knit connections uh, within us, uh, within the organization, and uh, because we comp travel to conferences to allow them to meet everyone else. Um, I think we can see from conference to conference we're all seeing the same faces. Um, and crypto is a generally a very tight-knit community, and graduating into this industry without those connections uh, is good, would be really tough. So that's one thing like we really prioritize above all, almost everything else. Oh, I I think June and Kira talk about you know from like college to industry. I think I want to add on like there's this other half about you know educating. Um, students who are actually less exposed to crypto in the first place, you know, from like just like a regular Penn student into the ecosystem is also something that we care a lot about. Um, so, I, so for example, we have like education programs that just like really for like beginners in crypto, and we also have which Vince can touch on, you know, like education programs for like developer um, specifically because um, you know the industry itself has a lot of jargons. There is a relatively high barrier of entry, and we do want to, you know. Um, make it as easy as possible for Penn students who are interested, um, maybe very little interest at the first place, to just be exposed to the ecosystem and exposed to opportunities out there. Well said, Cindy. Yeah, I mean, on the development side, we want people, especially like software engineers at Penn who are interested in crypto, it's like hard to start when you're first starting out. I'm sure we've all felt that at some point where we don't know what's going on in the space. And so I think our goal here is to provide a community where people that are interested in crypto can like join, reach out, learn more about the space, dig deep, and really pursue their own interests. And I, I guess that goes back to the overall interest of the club. Like, there is definitely like we want to be able to like be a player in the space, to be well known, and to be be able to get those connections for our students. But at the end of the day, our overall interest is probably driven by the interests of the individual members, which will change over the years. But it will depend on if, if a student is interested in a certain area. We might go in deeper into a certain area because at the end of the day, we're a student organization serving the students at Penn. Yeah, well said. I think everyone on stage has a meeting to run to in some way. So we're going to cut this. I mean, we're the conference is over time, so we're going to be um, very forward thinkers and proactive people, and we're going to cut this early. Uh, does everyone want to kind of go down, kind of um, talk about how you can be reached, what kind of person especially you might be interested in talking to, or what your committee is looking for as well, specifically? Sorry, words. Um, and I guess, uh, Vince, do you want to start? Sure. I can be reached on Telegram at Vince28 or Twitter at Vince28. 
And our committee is especially interested in partnering with any crypto partners that might be interested in looking for university devs to do part-time work for them. Spell your last name. T-I-U. Uh, my Twitter is Cindy J X Y. Um, I actually want to do a big shout out to our like research Substack. You can find it at franklindow.substack.com, where we put you know our research pieces on onto the Substack. And in terms of the work we do, you know we're looking for partnerships that would be interested, you know, for like opinionated, quantitative driven research. So you can be a protocol, you can be a venture capitalist, like it doesn't matter. So we are happy to talk. Um, feel free to reach out to me or Eric. Yeah, so uh, my username is the same everywhere. It's K-I-N-A-U-M-O-V. A reminder, I lead the investment team and we're looking for partners that are actively interested in uh, the sourcing reports that we put out every week, which feature several early stage companies that are currently raising funding and uh, that are also interested in the groups of students uh, that would be working with them uh, for the duration of the semester uh, as part-time uh, investment analysts. Um, always, always happy to address any questions and like, feel free to find me around the conference. I wear the bright pink shirt <laughs> of the volunteers, which has a funny monkey on it. Um, so you can reach me at Juan Bug Sun. J-U-A-N-B-U-G-S-U-N, uh, that's my telegram. Uh, if you reach out to penblockchain at gmail.com, we also very actively check that uh, email as well. So for anything governance related, for anything related, please you know, reach out, more than happy. Um, we'll respond with the, the right director. Um, from the governance perspective, uh, we'll have our website off pretty soon, fdgovernance.com, or no, not XYZ. And uh, if there's anything else that you know you guys are looking for, you're looking, you're interested in, just feel free to reach out. Um, I, I talk with a lot of stakeholders, from you know lobbyists to different protocols getting involved to different firms. Like any anything is a uh, is free game. Yeah, I think in general you can find us all by just messaging our Twitter, which is Franklin Dow underscore. Uh, I can be found as Eric B Jong. It's Eric with a K because um, my parents were quirky. Um, yeah. Carol, are you going to say something? Yeah, I think one thing worth mentioning uh, is also don't hesitate to reach out if your company is looking to have an event with uh, the students of Penn Blockchain. We can totally facilitate that. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening and to coming. Um, I know there's high opportunity costs. Every panel is great. So thank you guys.